Friends, it is August 19, 2022, and uh, we are reading in Genesis and in Matthew today, and we're going to look a little bit at one of the great themes of marriage, which is oneness. So I'm going to read first from Genesis 2.24. A man leaves his father and his mother, and he cleaves or clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And then in Matthew 19, Jesus' commentary on this verse uh, in a discussion with the Pharisees. I'll be reading verses 3 through 6. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and they tested him and they asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? So, background piece here. There were different rabbinic traditions on this. And... Uh, there were some rabbis that suggested that, that a man needed a legitimate cause to divorce his wife. It was unilateral, by the way. A man would take a letter of divorce to the elders at the gate and uh, get a couple of friends to concur, and, and it ended the marriage. And that left women in a very vulnerable position and shifted the power balance way too much toward, toward, toward men. Uh, other rabbis uh, believed you, you could divorce a woman for any any cause. They gave examples like you know if you bur if the dinner got burned, and again uh, this very bad for the fundamental quality and partnering aspects of marriage. And uh, Jesus says this: Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Now that's a quote from Genesis chapter. Uh, one, the creation of uh, men and women in God's image, male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. They're no longer two, but one. What God has joined together, no one else should separate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is reinforcing that this relationship this of oneness is to be a permanent one within the boundary of this light lifetime and uh, that's a restriction right you talk about a severe restriction this is a example of principle we learned yesterday that some restrictions are freeing not limiting and if the, the restriction in marriage is is exclusivity Jesus is saying you need to be permanently connected in a unique and irreplaceable union of mind and body and spirit it's, it's to become that's what it means to be one flesh and that doesn't admit of other parties so you can't have a lover on the side you 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 can't um engage in other kinds of sexual activity that violate the the, the limitations of that one relationship and that's often portrayed certainly in our culture usually portrayed as being this terrible restriction but actually it makes possible a range of things that would be impossible without it could never develop trust and loyalty if you had a series of serial relationships because no one could invest enough knowing that the thing wasn't going to last and people were going to move on without the stability of lifelong commitment there's no platform for this generational task of raising children and so there's no hope for the human project going forward uh, there's no basis for for genuine trust and intimacy there's nothing that can be communicated beyond desire in short-term and hookup type relationships. It's the lifelong and exclusive character of it that actually frees us up for the things we most need, freedom and intimacy, and for this great calling that God's given us of, uh, of generativity. Marriage involves clear restrictions that create great possibilities. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be people who don't resist but embrace the holy and life-giving restrictions that you give us. Uh, trying to live outside of those creates mess and conflict and pain and sorrow. And it undermines uh, our ability to do to be the people that we need to be and do the things that you want us to do. So help us to live happily and gratefully within your restrictions. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.